Thank you guys real quick. See you guys. Have a good one. See you, kid. Good job, coach. See you, kid. Tomorrow, 11. All right, so to kind of get started, uh, coach, obviously not the result we wanted, but uh, 4,621 fans in attendance, uh, biggest crowd since the home opener in 2019. You know, what can you kind of say about the match and um, what City Stadium brought tonight? First, thank you so much to the City of Richmond. What an amazing opportunity, and thank you for coming out. Um, you know, I, I don't. I think we managed the game really well. I think the first half we were the better team. Uh, it's similar to the Tormenta game last night. If we finish our chances, we go into halftime up. And uh, unfortunately, the only I think it was the only shot they had in the first half. I haven't checked the statistics. Goes in the in the goal, and this was life. But we battle back. We score a great goal. Uh, momentum shifts our way, and then the referees call a foul for us. Our center backs go shifting up the field for a free kick, and then they take a, a quick one, and the referees don't stop it. I'm, I'm very frustrated with that because it's unfortunate that you have to have a game that's this hard for us already uh, to, to do something like that and allow that to happen. It's just unfortunate. So, momentum shifts back to them. They score a few goals, and uh, they're an MLS team, and we're not. This is the life of things. You mentioned that first half, you guys were very aggressive uh, and making some runs early. Was that, was that the goal to try to see if you could set a tone early uh, and make as many attempts as possible um, early on? We call it selective pressure. Uh, there are cues that we work on, and, and when there's an opportunity to press, we press. I, I felt like they weren't moving the ball very quickly across the back. Uh, they're a very good possession team, but we had the ability to jump it. And Emmy and Nell and Bentley and those guys, we jumped a few balls, and you know, I, I, I want to see Bentley's one on the top of the six because that was uh, unfortunate. But uh, you know, I thought the guys did really well with the game plan. You feel like that one would have gone in, that could have kind of shifted the tone of, of, of the, the way things played out. You know, one of the things that, that players have to understand is that the reason that guys are in MLS is because they're very good, and when they get an opportunity, they take it. When they got one look, they finished. We had three to four because we have guys still working to get there. I mean, this is, this is why this is a difference in levels. But, um, you know, I, I hard pill to swallow. That wasn't a five to one game, uh, but this is the life of things. What was your kind of uh, thoughts of the way uh, Zappa's goal played out? Uh, obviously, Stephen kind of was able to chip it back to him, and he, he finished um, nicely there. So. Well, it's always nice when Zaka scores goals. I mean, he scored a heck of a bomb last year against North Texas, and we're always happy because that guy does the dirty work all the time for us. Uh, I just think the guy stuck with it. I was really proud of him. You know, going into the second half, again, I think we were all over him. Uh, I think we could have scored another goal at that time, but uh, just unfortunate what happened in the game. You talked about this being an audition for your guys and a glorious opportunity. Anyone who really stood out to you that you were particularly proud of their effort tonight? No, Vignoles was the best soccer player on the field. I don't care what you say. You can take every player on that team and look at it. And I don't know if it was because the opposing coach was Spanish or not, but uh, he definitely said, look, I'm a good soccer player. But Nils in the mood. He's as good as anybody and can play at any level. So I, I was really proud of him. I know it was frustrating the way you mentioned the way um, the goal came out as a foul and stopped us there and um, you're able to kind of get ahead and score there. But um, what do you consider the biggest key to the way things kind of, um, you know, kind of played out from there? I was, you started really using their speed, um, you know, and the attack there. How do you kind of just evaluate how, how things go to maybe um, sort of flow from there like, as they started scoring more and more goals? What a good MLS team. Mm -hmm. I mean, I played in that league. You, the guys he subbed on are the starting guys. There's DPs. I mean, one guy makes more money in our whole, you know, roster. That's the life of things. They were they were good in counterattacking, I think. Uh, but honestly, I don't think they caused us much trouble until the goal that they scored, and that one was a little bit of a bobble. Um, second half, we opened up a little to try to chase the game, but um, frustrating how it played out. You know, in the last game this last Saturday, we had a ball out of bounds that went back in, and Ford Madison scores to go. And then today, there's a a thing where it's just frustrating when, when, when things outside of your control affect the game. It's not the reason we lost the game. It's just frustrating because it would have been great at one-to-one -one to not have something like that happen. Don't you agree? So how do you kind of move forward just with the way got, with, with the performance you did see from guy mentioned like, like Neil, how do you kind of move forward and use this um, heading back into league play? Do you know the best part about this club? It's been here 30 years, and the culture in this group is so good. The guys are pissed, but all they're going to do is turn around and give it right to Omaha. That's what we do here. So I'm not worried about that at all. I know I'm going to get a great reaction. N nobody's happy that we lost, and five goals always stinks. But guess what? It wasn't a five to one game. Ole and getting more comfortable in his time here? Well, yes, to say it simply. And, and you saw a little bit of his quality. Yeah. Guy takes a ball, dribbles through three guys, goes the length of the field, almost scores a goal. You can see what he's going to become. He just needs a little bit of time. I mean, the guy hasn't played soccer in six months. But the most important thing for me was. 
he's already bought into culture, you know how I know that? Ball gets popped over the top, the guy puts his head down and runs 60 yards and chases down Gaines, who's as fast as anybody on the field, and stops him. That right there tells me he's a Richmond kicker. Yeah, you've built up uh, you know, quite a bit of depth in the team now. How is that you know, working out uh, you know, for you and being able to you know, manage them? I imagine all the guys want to play 90 every single game. How, you know, how is that uh, showing itself in training? We'll call it healthy competition. You know, the reality and what I say to them all the time is when you get your opportunity, take it. And if guys are doing the job and we're winning and things are going well, then they stay in the game. But the second that a, that a little window opens up, guys get a chance. And that, that should raise the level in every position. And then, you know, how do you uh, move the guys forward to Saturday against uh, defending champion Omaha? We eat our pasta, we take our ice <laughs> bath, we evaluate, and uh, we get ready. I mean, it, at the end of the day, we knew what this week was about. Again, the Madison game, an anomaly in the game, decided the game. Tonight, kind of an anomaly change of momentum in the game. It's up to us to change that within the game on Saturday to start right and get ready, and I think we'll be just fine. All set, guys. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you all. Appreciate it.